Hello, everyone. hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CX2 News. A lot of great stories in today's episode. All of them time marked down below. Let's hop into our first one, though, all about the McSkillet trade ban. Now, first off, I'm going to link a video down below for all of you guys who are curious about his trade ban. I can confirm to all of you guys 100% he has been trade banned for quite some time now. I did talk to McSkillet quite some time ago, and he told me he's now been trade banned for about four to five months, and that was actually a month or two ago. So, yes, McSkillet was actually trade banned, I believe, for the, for the time being, around six months ago, and has trimmed trade banned ever since. He did actually tell me through Twitter DMs, which I will not show you guys but I can I'm not gonna lie to you about this he actually was gonna tell his viewership about why he was banned and what he did apparently it was a small mistake on his end and he never made that video for his viewers so yes I'm gonna link a great video down below to go into detail about what skins were actually banned on his account it's gonna be an insane inventory to go through a lot of ten thousand dollar plus skins a lot of you know several thousand dollar skins in his inventory and as of right now he will not be getting them back now alleged rumors right now as well I'll link his trade link and steam profile down below the trade ban does not show up on his actual steam account but if you go to try and trade with him you you can clearly see he is trade banned and on top of that as well and it might also be alleged rumors saying his ties to CSGO Magic, CSGO Kingdom, other sites out there he's been affiliated with and uh, you guys are very well aware that Valve does uh, tend to trade ban a lot of accounts and bot accounts that are actually or inventory accounts that are tied to any of those gambling websites and it just so happened McSkillet was one of those people so according to him uh, you know in DMs with him he, he made a small mistake he was going to make us all aware of exactly what he did to get trade banned he has never made that video will he make it now that he's been I guess you could say called out or been, been brought to life most likely not. He really has no reason to, but it is quite sad to see all those amazing skins now seemingly go to waste. And also a little Twitter beef out there. If you guys follow the Don Hossie as well as Mo TV, I'll link both their accounts down below. They had a conversation back and forth on Twitter, uh, kind of in response, of course, to ESCA's allegations out there. If you watch yesterday's video about ESCA apparently paying or offering to pay some players out there up to $2,000 per month to only play on their platform, that being ESCA, and not to play their competitors' platform, mainly right now being Face It. Now, they also would be forcing these players to sign an NDA a non-disclosure agreement, pretty much saying they could not talk about the agreement they made. So uh, this did go a bit viral as, as some pro players out there like JW confirmed it was true. They were receiving emails and offers to actually play on ESCA's platform and sign an NDA to get paid just to play ESCA and nothing else out there. And there was a big argument back and forth. A lot of pro players like Dazed also responding about this and saying there really was no big deal. A lot of people out there pay for this kind of stuff. And again, I want to stress my only big problem with this. Of course, I'm not a semi-pro player. I'm not even a really a good CSGO player. And I talked to you guys about this. The one problem I had that I saw a, a pretty decent argument for was the fact the NDA had to be signed. You know, the fact these guys could not talk about them signing the agreement would be the only the only flimsy part of that argument. I cannot argue the fact that it's a great thing to be pray, playing these semi-pro or pro players, you know, a good amount of money for this. And of course, $24,000 a year if they sign those long-term contracts, that's a pretty good sum of money and a great way to get these guys to play CSGO. And of course, it's, it's to benefit for both parties. But again, the only problem I had with that was, of course, the NDA. But on top of that, I'd love to hear what you guys think. And, and we all also had a bit of bickering back and forth as the Don actually accused Mo TV of being one of those people who was allegedly paid to play on ESCA and no other, no other platforms out there and he did not tell anyone of course if he did sign that agreement he wouldn't be able to disclose that anyway Mo TV fired back and said he was a liar saying per sources and then of course going off on Don Hossie and then Don Hossie fired back a big bullet which we've already talked about I'm, I'm going to probably side with one thing here and say we probably should move on with this by now but either way we had the Don yesterday posting things about CSGO Diamond if you guys are well aware of the Mo TV scandal that happened, uh, was it two years ago now? The, the CSGO Diamonds, he knew the numbers out there. He was being paid to, to rig those bets. And again, this is a long, long time ago. I think a lot of us have moved on from then. And then we also had pro players like Angel step in. And I'm not really sure if Angel knew about this, but this was actually exposed quite some time ago. So not an issue we're going to bring back up. But yes, the Don Hossi and Mo TV going back and forth as we have all these leakers out there that are apparently leaking things that are just not true. Who do you guys believe? Was Mo TV one of those people out there paid to play ESCA and now he can't tell? us because he's in an NDA or a non-disclosure agreement, I guess we might never know. And then some roster change news out there. No really big surprise here, but apparently Gamut Gaming will be replacing Seized on that roster with Vegas Squadron's inactive roster member known as Mir. And I will also kind of confirm this. Flickshot did announce it as well as Gambit announced it as well. And on top of that, for even further information, we also had Seized apparently not playing against Heroic yesterday. So he does seem to be going inactive on that Gamut Gaming roster. And it does seem to be Vegas Squadron's Mir replacing him on that roster as well. So some big changes there in the CIS scene and just in time of course for the major qualifiers coming up in the next couple months here we'll see if Gamut Gaming trying to finalize their IGL spot trying to finalize their new members if they can actually get ready in time to maybe win another major and then very ironic news and probably pleasing news for many of you out there we've talked about the last couple of days of course Fierce Tigers the Chinese corruption over there the suspicious team who is not only involved with a VAC band member known as Leo they also signed a new guy on the, on the team or new girl known as TB on that roster and apparently TB girl was actually a different member known as Supreme a lot of information coming out of that story a lot of, a lot of big question marks 
Sharks out of Fierce Tigers. They have now been officially disqualified from the Asian Minor Qualifier. If you guys do not know about this a couple days ago, they managed to qualify for the Face It Minor. So a pretty big step there and at one step closer to making the major. And they did so in pretty horrendous fashion. Four of the teams, of the four teams they faced to get to that, that actual minor spot, three of them were forfeited due to internet issues. And when it came to the final against VG Gaming, VG Gaming's internet was maliciously, apparently disconnected. So on top of that as well, they also played with a member who is known for historically cheating as well as match fixing. And now apparently as of last night, HLTV reported this as well as Face It Admins have confirmed, Fierce Tigers has now been officially disqualified because one of their members uh, known as TB Girl, who they played with to qualify, was apparently in some way that account was connected to Leo. Leo being a VAC band player, you cannot be connected to those players at all. And yes, they will be disqualified going forward. Now I'm not really sure the official rule book here, but it does seem that Face It was looking for any way to disqualify these guys. And I would say it's pretty much been justified. These guys didn't also not want to play the rematch. If you are well aware as well, a couple of the, I think it was yesterday they did announce Fierce Tigers was going to have to rematch against Vici Gaming because of Vici Gaming's internet issues. They wanted to replay that final match and the winner would go to the minor and it was actually Fierce Tigers making up a bunch of excuses saying no, we're not going to abide by these rules. We will not rematch them and also by the way, all of our players are on vacation so they can't do it. They were not going to rematch them anyway and they are now been officially disqualified. It will be the semi-final loss against uh, one of those teams, Team Roar who will now face off against Vici Gaming for that final minor spot out of the Asian scene. So yes, heavily ironic news and I'm sure many of you are very happy to hear about that. Fierce Tigers has now been, I guess you could say, uh, disqualified and who knows what their future might be as apparently a lot of their roster is the same play. Who, yeah, who knows? Big question marks over there in the Asian scene. And a couple quick things to clarify from yesterday's video. I do want to apologize for that thumbnail. First of which there was actually Simple and Taco in the thumbnail. That was because they were going to be doing a 1v1 for $1,000. That was actually scheduled for a couple days ago. It is now going to be today, the point of you guys watching this and I had no time to actually change that thumbnail with my thumbnail maker. So I do apologize for that. Also, people kind of a bit upset that MBK was in a Cloud9 jersey. I also want to you know, re retell you guys as well, if you did not, were not aware of this, Cloud9 looking to replace their IGL FNS. Uh, we'll talk about that buyout, I guess, later on in some other episode. Uh, I can correct myself here as well. Uh, that was because Cloud9 has interest in replacing FNS with either MBK or Apex. So that's why he was in the Cloud9 jersey in the thumbnail. For all of you guys who are worried about clickbait, I know it's, I don't, it's a tough subject to talk about because whenever you talk about it, you're probably going to be a hypocrite in terms of if I talk about it, I'll be a hypocrite as well. So I didn't want to apologize for that. And also a big correction, uh, I talked about Hotshot. He was actually the co-founder of CLG. I did kind of forget about FNS's stint with Complexity after leaving CLG. So I do apologize. The co-founder of CLG actually called out the CEO of Cloud9 about the 200k buyout for FNS and apparently it not being true. So I misspoke about that. So we'll see if it actually was true. Allegedly right now, the co-founder of CLG does not believe that, the, that Cloud9 actually paid $200,000 for the acquiring or the buyout of FNS. So that was in corrections for yesterday's news. Now on to our very last stories. That is allegedly a brand new Fnatic Academy roster. What I mean by that is one new player. They of course signed for the five from the gamer show and apparently that will be for six months. I do believe uh, it could be an extended three month contract after their first three months. But either way, they decided not to sign their fit member Kenny due to the communication issues. It does seem right now their ESCA roster has been updated with a former big member known as Lucker. He was actually their trial member for quite some time and he, he didn't spend too much time there with big. But apparently Fnatic Academy is very interested in Lucker and he will be their fit member going forward. This actually is their final roster. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of CSK News and uh, I just took caffeine gum. So I think that last clip was me talking way too fast and maybe why I'm talking too fast is because I'm just way too excited right now because I have some really big news for all of you guys but I can't share with you right now. So I'm going to see you guys tomorrow instead. So I hope you guys all, I will see you guys all tomorrow or sometime soon the weekend recap. Thank you all for watching. I cannot thank you all enough for the comments and the, and the just, it, it, big news coming soon guys. I cannot wait to announce it. Have a great day.